Hello, everyone. Welcome to Monday, March 30th. Thanks for tuning in to the Day Weather Podcast. Well, folks, as we take a look at what's coming as we leave March into early April, for some of you, you're not going to like what you're going to be hearing at all, especially with so many of us cooped up and not be able to go anywhere. When we do get to go outside, it would be nice to have some nice weather. Now, we're going to have, generally speaking, some nice weather here to start the week. Today and tomorrow won't be that bad, considering 50s and 60s in many areas. There'll be a few showers around, but we're going to have some spring ups and downs. Somewhat mild weather through Tuesday, but colder weather with rain and snow is going to move into our neck of the woods Wednesday through early Friday. April is going to start off with bouts of unseasonably cold weather. We have a change in the weather pattern coming up here over the next two to three weeks. Over the last few weeks, we've had generally a west-east flowing jet stream that's brought west coast storms in, but kept temperatures between the storms relatively mild. But that's about ready to change as most of our weather is going to be coming in from the northwest now. Now, what I'm going to show you are two views of the northern hemisphere. So you want to look towards right here, and this is where you're going to be looking at the North Pole. So you're looking straight down to the Northern Hemisphere if, from a bird's eye view of the Earth. And this is what we're showing you in terms of the jet stream pattern, how it goes across the globe. Now, this is where we are right now. What I want to highlight for you is the shape of all this blue and green here. So basically, this is all the really cold air that's been up in the northern latitudes, as you'd expect, for the winter season. For most of the winter in most of the northern hemisphere, the severe cold has been locked up in the high latitudes. It really hasn't a chance to move off. But as you change the seasons, this area of cold begins to break up into pieces. And as it begins to break up into pieces, this is one reason why you have a lot of active weather in March as these pockets of cold will break off the vortex of cold in the higher latitudes. Here's one of those right now off the coast of British Columbia. And we've got the really cold air here over in Siberia, over on the other side of the globe. There is a lot of cold air, folks, that is in the high northern latitudes for this time of year because it has been bottled up for most of the year. Now, this is where we are today with the Northern Hemisphere. This is where we are 15 days from now. What I want you to notice is that the extent of the green and blue grows and expands as it starts to begin to break up across the Northern Hemisphere. So we have a much larger area of colder air beginning to come off the globe's northern latitudes which is typical for this time of year. And you get to break off these pieces of cold air where you get these troughs coming in like this. So what this means is for at least the first two weeks of April, cold air is going to get released from the northern latitudes. This means unsettled weather. Now let's go closer to home. This is a view of North America, the view, the view we usually show you. And you can see that we've got the jet stream coming on through. We've got a little ripple coming through today. This is today's weather chart. You see this little ripple? This will produce some rain and snow showers across portions of Wyoming and Colorado today. But it will skedaddle off to the east. This big pocket of cold air right here. This is some pretty cold air. Well, this system is going to slide this way. Now, over the last couple of weeks, these systems have done this. They've gone down the West Coast, then they've turned and come up from the Southwest. That's been the trend for the last three weeks. But now the trend will be for the cold air to take a route like this. So what's going to happen is this part of the country right here is going to go unseasonably cold at the end of the week. Areas of rain and snow will develop out into this area here. Then as these systems progress east, well, you're going to have severe weather breaking out across the southeastern United States as this real cold air loft swings on through. So this is a change. Instead of storms going down to the west coast, then curving northeast, we're going to see a trajectory now of these systems heading to the southeast. So this is where we are today. As we go into Wednesday afternoon, you can see that cold air begins to break off and it's coming this way. This is a lot of cold air coming in behind it. The end result is that by Thursday, the trough is more well seated into the interior west. There's a funneling of northwest winds right into the high plains and Rockies, and we're going to go into wintry weather. 
This is the precipitation forecast. This is through 6 p.m. Uh, Thursday. This is for Thursday evening. You can see there's a pretty good swath of yellow and blue here across east central and southeastern Wyoming, western Nebraska, into South Dakota. This is a pattern when you get weather coming in from the northwest like this. That Yellowstone Park, the Idaho Mountains, the Pacific Northwest Mountains are going to start to get into some pretty heavy spring snows. And some of this will be rain and snow on the plains, but take a look. Here's some snow forecast through Thursday evening. And you can see a lot of the plains of Wyoming in the Nebraska, South Dakota, and the mountains going to get some snow. These aren't huge amounts, but you know, we're talking about cold, wet conditions on the plains. Anyone with young or weak livestock, anyone who's going to be starting calving in April, well, you're going to need to stay on your toes at least through the first half of the month as this pattern is changing the flow of air coming in from the northwest now. Look at the cold air that is coming on in. This is through Thursday evening here. That's zero Zulu Friday. And you can see all this green and purple. The purple and blue and green represent below average temperatures relative to normal. Look at that wedge of cold air that's coming on in. And you can see the contrast of the warm air getting pushed out ahead of it. So you can surmise there's going to be severe weather marching across the country as this cold air cuts loose. So we're looking at starting the week relatively mild. By the end of the week, unseasonably cold. I would not be surprised if many areas on Thursday don't get out of the 20s for highs. Now, by 10 days from now, we see that we have another slug of cold air. Now, this is next Wednesday, April 9th. Look how similar it is to the pattern we're looking at now. Here comes another wedge of cold. This is 10 days from now. Then as we go out to 15 days, look at that. This is all the way through April 13th. So basically, folks, the northern latitudes are going to start cutting the cold air loose. They're going to come off these cold air pieces and chunks and come through the western United States. And so what's going to happen through the first two weeks of April is this half of the country is going to be on the whole colder than average. This half of the country much warmer than average. In the middle, you're going to have lots of severe weather. And out here, you're going to have mountain snows. It looks like April will be a much more productive snow month in the mountains of the Intermountain West than March was. And this is a concern, especially for livestock interest. A lot of folks are calving in April now. And April, at least for the two weeks, for the start of the month, we're looking at below average temperatures and more of a wintry look to the weather than we have a spring-like look to it. If we were to go out and take a look at temperatures 15 days out, look at where they are relative to normal two weeks from now. You can see that cold air really entrenched. Look at Arizona, New Mexico. So we're talking about a tendency for some really cold air to be in the western half of the country. I know this is not what you would like to hear. I know a lot of you would like to just get into a spring pattern. But at least through the first two weeks of the new month, we're going to be looking at more of a wintry pattern than a spring one. Now, we're hoping that we'll springboard into late April into early May with a transition to warmer weather. In the meantime, enjoy the next couple of days of relatively mild weather before the cold hits.